Think about that tonight. Sin is more than most people think it is. You know, most people think of sin in, in just five things. Murder, drunkenness, lying, stealing, and adultery. So, so and so is backslid. First thing people think about, what did he do? Did he get, commit murder? Did he get drunk? Did he get caught lying or stealing or committing adultery? A lot of folks think if you don't commit adultery and don't murder and don't lie and don't steal, that you're a pretty good person. But I want you to realize tonight, my friends, is 726 different sins mentioned in the Word of God. Not just five, but 726 of them. And so then as a result, you can mention those five, but you still got 721 more to deal with and to face. So we need to wake up to the fact, just because I'm not a murderer, I hadn't committed adultery, hadn't been drunk, hadn't been a liar, hadn't been a thief. There's some other things I have been, and I am being. I need to face the reality of it that the judgment of God will come, the chastening hand of God will come, and I shall be the loser because of it. And I want you to realize in the very beginning of, of our thinking on this, he said, those that do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, you mention them. Look at them again there. Which are manifest, which of these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lascivious, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, bearance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, endings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. I tell you that those who continue in these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now keep in mind the wording there, and let's look back for verification of it all in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter and the ninth verse. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor abuse themselves from mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. What he's talking about there is the inheritance, which is simply saying, my friend, your soul isn't lost because you've sinned some sin. It isn't going to be lost because you've sinned some sin, but it's going to affect your inheritance in eternity. Because after all, your salvation doesn't depend upon the sin you commit or don't commit. Your salvation depends upon a birth. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. First chapter of John. Didn't say as many as quit their sinning and as many as got sinless and perfect received the power. No, no, as many as received him, talking about Jesus Christ. He gave them power to become the sons of God, which were born. First Peter tells us that we were born of an imperishable seed, an incorruptible seed, which liveth and abideth forever. Book of Luke, he said, neither can they die any more. The equal end unto the angels and all the children of the resurrection. Jesus said, they that believe in me shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck him out of my hand, I'll in no wise cast out any that come to me. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. So, my friends, it's the matter of eating of the bread of life, which is Christ. Taking of the water of life, which is Christ. There comes a well of water bubbling up into everlasting life. It's a matter of being born into the kingdom of God, not joining it or living it or trying to get good enough to get in. It's an instantaneous act of God that saves your soul. And he tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes 3.14, Whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. You can't add anything to it and take anything from it. So when God saved your soul, he saved it forever. If you tried a thousand years, you couldn't get a bit better saved. If you tried another thousand, you couldn't get a bit less saved. Because when God saves your soul, 
You can't add nothing to it. You can't take nothing from it. He didn't save it on the basis of you being sinless or going to be sinless or perfect. He saved it because you received the seed. Salvation. We receive in our heart the seed of God, which is Jesus Christ. And as a result, we're born into the family of God. We are quickened. Matter of fact, salvation happens so suddenly that, my friends, you can't talk about it in the past except in the past tense. You hath he quickened. Not going to do it already did it when you believe. He that believeth hath everlasting life. Not going to have it, you had it when you believe. So as a result, salvation is an instantaneous act of God so sudden that you can't talk about it except in the past. In other words, my friends, you don't go out and touch a live electric wire and say, I'm now being shocked. No, you touch a wire. I'm shocked. You don't touch a red hot stove and say, I'm now being burned. You touch a stove, burnt me. You don't touch the living Spirit of God and say, I'm now being saved. You touch the living Spirit of God, I'm saved. Forever. It's not done. If you didn't want to go to heaven and you got saved, it's too late to change your mind. You're going to go now anyhow. Because that's just the way God ordered it. My friends, Jesus said, those out there with me, I've kept. None of them's lost. He's never lost the one that God gave him. Never will lose the one that God gave him. So as a result, something else, the moment that God saved your soul, the Holy Ghost of God sealed it. How long? Until the day of redemption. Like your wife or mother puts vegetables or meat in a can and seals them up and sets them on the shelf until the day of use. Wait a minute, preacher, sometimes that's false. If it's spark, it wasn't sealed. If it had been sealed, it couldn't, couldn't spark. And he sealed you. How long is he sealed good? Unto the day of redemption. Seal also, if you please, means ownership. When God saved you, the seal was placed. That meant God's ownership. And as a result of it, that's the way it is. I wrote to a pastor a letter about this and addressed it to Curtis Barbary Bennett in North Carolina. And put it in an envelope and sealed it up. Put a 15 cent stamp on it. My secretary carried it to the post office and dropped it in the post office. Three or four different people handled it at Myrtle. Finally got on the mail truck and went to Memphis and the distribution center of the mail in Memphis. Some 15 and 20 different people handled it. Then finally it came to North Carolina and distributed his hair hammer. Finally, the rural carrier brought it to his mailbox. But regardless of who handled it, some 30 people probably handled it at the time it left my hand, so it got to his hand. But his first class sealed up to be delivered to him. And regardless of who handled it, regardless of who took a hold of it, all they could do is pass it on. But when he got it, it's his mail, he could open it up. That's exactly when God saved your soul. The Holy Ghost sealed it up and put on there God the Father of the Holy City of the New Jerusalem and stamped it. And my friends, regardless of how many devils handles me between here and there, all they can do is pass me on. Pass me on. Pass me on. Pass me on. I am God's mail addressed to God the Father of the Holy City of the New Jerusalem. Bad devils, big devils, all the devils cohorted together can't take that mail and destroy it. The Holy Ghost of God put it in there and it'll get to God the Father. So I'm saying that to say this. You're not saved because of one sin. You quit or going to quit. You're saved through Jesus Christ, sealed with the Holy Ghost. You're born into the family of God. You don't work into it and you don't live good enough. Get into it. So I want you to realize tonight, my brother and sister, that salvation is the gift of God. And it's an eternal act of God. So, I want you to realize something. It's not a sin that's going to send you to hell, and it's not some sin that's going to keep you out of heaven. Not that at all. Let's look at it. I had a friend over at Savannah, Tennessee, Mr. Callahan. He heard me preach one night about souls being saved eternally. He said, I don't believe it. I believe it can be lost. I said, you don't believe it. Said, yes, I do. 
Finally, I said to him, I said, Brother, I want to ask you something. Do you know when you got saved? He said, I can take you in two inches where I said when the Lord saved me, you and the devil, nobody else can't make me doubt my experience. I know I'm saved. I said, I'm not trying to make you doubt, just want to be sure you're saved. Now, I said, you think you can be lost after you're saved? I said, what loses you after you're saved? I said, sin, of course. I said, okay. We talked about something else so I wouldn't see I was sleeping up on him. I want to hear him in. And I said, I want to ask you a question before I leave. Have you ever sinned since you got saved? He said, well, sure. Thought a foolish sin. I said, yeah. Foolish judgment sin. I said, yes. To him that knoweth do good and do it, but not to him it's sin. I said, yes. Mentioned two or three other things. I said, brother, let me ask you something. Would you say you'd sin a hundred times a year since you got saved? He said, no, thousands. I said, hundred. Keep it in a hundred bar. You've been saved 16 years, then you've sinned 1,600 times, right? He said, it'd be thousands. I said, no, we're going to keep it down in the hundred bracket. I said, now look me straight in the eye. Do you mean to tell me you've been lost 1,600 times since you got saved? He said, no, I had never been he come this way and said, I don't guess I do believe that, do I? I said, I knew you didn't when you started. If you're going to let one sin lose you, brother, one will lose you as quick as the other. If sin's going to lose you, which one loses you? Face the truth. My friends, you're not saved because you don't commit certain sins. You can live as clean as an angel and never sin a sin. Still go to hell if you're not born again. So your salvation, brother and sister, depends upon the birth, the new birth, the spiritual birth, receiving Christ and getting your soul sealed under the river of redemption. And I want you to realize tonight that's one thing I want you to see. So you go to heaven through Jesus Christ. Not through perfection, not through sinlessness and perfect living, but to go to heaven through Jesus. He said, I am the door. If any man comes in, he comes in through me. So recognize that God sent him to seek and to save. If you ever say, Jesus does the saving. So my friends, keep this in mind. He said, if you continue practicing these things and continue in them, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Which is simply saying, you're cutting off your rewards in heaven by living a worldly, sinful, indifferent, careless life. You're not going to send your soul to hell. No, no, no. If it's been saved, it's still saved. But you sure can cut down your payroll by practicing the things of this world and giving it to over to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and giving over to the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh. You can certainly shorten your payroll. You're cheating yourself, not God.